Now let's write a small script to take advantage of the user interactivity that reading from the standard input file handle provides for us. We'll prompt the user for some input and we'll take in whatever they supply back to us using the diamond operator to take data from the standard input file handle and we'll assign that value to the variable name. Then we'll take off the trailing line break that'll be automatically assigned with the data. Finally, we'll print the results. Moving over to our command line to test our script out. Our script works as it should do. If we jump back into our text editor and remove the line where we're running the chomp function on the name, if I save that and return to our text editor and give it exactly the same input, you'll notice that the full stop is actually displaced onto the next line. So it's important to include the chomp function when we want to make sure that we're taking away that extra new line at the end. Let's do something slightly more complicated now. Let's write a script that allows the user to specify a file and then returns the contents of the file to the command line for the user to see. In order to do this, first of all we're going to break down the main steps of the program and write in little comments. Then we can actually fill in the Perl script around the comments as we script out each one. So the first thing we need to do is to get the file name from the user. Then we'll need to open a file handle and pull in the contents of the file. Once we've done that, we can safely show the contents to the user. These are the basic steps. There are some other quite necessary steps that we haven't mapped out here, but let's just fill these in for now and cross the bridges as we come to them. So in a similar way to the last program, we're going to prompt the user for some input. And this time we're going to assign the input to the scalar variable file name. Once again, we're going to knock the new line off the end of that. Then we need to open a file handle. We're going to call it working for now. And we're going to call the file name variable as the second argument of the open function. Now that our file handle is open, we might also want to run a stat function to allow us to get the size of the file and then use the read function to pull in the entire file at once into another scalar variable. We're going to call that contents and we're going to use the seventh element of the stats array that we just created in the previous line as the size of the data that we're pulling in because that's the size of the file itself. Finally, we're going to print the contents of the file back to the user. Let's pop over to our command line and see how this works. First of all, we just need to see what text files there are available for us to run this script on. Now if we run our file script, it'll prompt us for which particular text file we want to view the contents of. And let's say we want to see recipe.txt. Our script has worked. The results have been returned to us. So far, so good. In our next movie, we're going to see what's wrong with this script and go some way towards fixing it.